this is Ross from Bigger Painting and uh, so I'm delaying with videos. This is Lion Rampant, it's been a very busy time. And uh, this is going to be a sort of not quite a standard game. We're going to play with the usual points. That's just about just under 24 points this time. And uh, my friend Roger has got um, the additional idea of adding in uh, some rules for a general, which kind of makes it just a little bit less random on the activation. The idea of it is that you can put the general with a unit, and that unit gets um, a free roll on the activation. So if you do fail, you do at least get a second chance. It gives you a little extra tactical thing as to where to put the general, rather than just making it uh, a completely random process. Worked really well, and this was a particularly exciting game. I'll, I'll cover some of the rules, but not as much as in the intro game. And uh, I'm planning to do a how to play Lion Rampant uh, very soon, so please bear with me on that. Um, I hope you enjoy the report. I'm going to try and do it with some different technology again, so let's hope this works. Okay, please enjoy the game. If you do, click like and uh, leave comments and let me know where I got the rules wrong again. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, so we rolled up a random scenario from the rule book, and we've got a taxing afternoon. What's told is that the attackers are going to come in and try and steal the taxes that have been put together in nice little piles for collecting. And the defender's going to come from the other end of the table and try and stop all those lovely juicy taxes being stolen. Now the taxes are represented by six tokens. You'll see them in a minute. Uh, one is worth three points. Three are worth two points and two with one point. But these are all face down and hidden, in our case, around the six buildings that uh, Roger's got from foreground. Very nice they are too. Uh, once you pick them up, you can't drop them back down again. So if you sort of pick up the one, you're stuck with it. Now, if you manage to leave the table by choice, <coughs> rather than treating, retreating or routing, you gain those points at the end of the game. A unit may only carry one token and may not return to the table once it leaves. If the unit is routed or wiped out during attack, the unit routing picks it up the token, if it does not already have one. Otherwise, just leave the token where it is and someone else can pick it up. You can't choose to drop a token once you've picked it up. So if you get a low one, you can choose immediately to pick it up or not. If you retreat off the table, you lose it. And both players ignore the, sorry, the, the following courage test trigger. Unit becomes your only unit remaining on the table. The game ends once one side's left the table. And then the other side is assumed to pick up all the ones that are left. So it's a state uh, counter. One of the great things with this game um, are the scenarios. <laughs> it's, it's, it's a lot more interesting than just lining up and killing each other. I often think, why are we fighting today? With this, you know, we're coming to grab the loot. So we're using uh, samurai figures. He's in the process of being painted. You'll see him in later reviews, finished. So cavalry, um, they're going to be medium cavalry, so they're not the fully mounted MAA or men-at-arms. They're sort of mounted sergeants, so not quite as uh, killy. And I've got a unit each of the, the sort of Hatamoto, the superior samurai. Actually, these are just the, the regular samurai. Get the right way around. There's a Hatamoto, six of these bad boys. They are the foot uh, uh, men at arms. And I've got the Bidowers. Works well with the samurai figures, and I think uh, these are lovely figures from Perry, of course. And also, if something seems right about samurai crashing into each other to speed things up. And then they've got the, I think they're called Tipu, Topu. Oops, excuse my Japanese. But anyway, the shooty guys with muskets. Well, the crossbows. We're using the crossbow rules. For these musket guys. Okay, so there's the setup. One of us is going to come on from the right, me as it turns out, Roger from the left, and it's a bit of a race for the center. I'm going to be trying to loot those six houses. So the first decision, of course, is do you just grab the first two and hope for more? Or what I tended to go for, depending on how the activations work, is try and grab the middle two. I can grab the other two later, and hopefully those four will be enough to win the game. We also roll for general's bonuses, and Roger gets top six. <laughs> there you go. Okay, just so wanted to check. Roger with the double twelve, a great double six. Sorry, great leader. The leader's unit automatically passes all move, attack, and shoot activations, and all rally tests. 
That's a stonking roll, especially as we're playing with uh, a general's an extra figure who can move around between the units. So each turn you can choose which one is just going to do whatever is required. That's a great roll. So what did I roll? Yeah, double one. <laughs> Don't talk to me about odds with dice. Anyway, so um, apparently I'm forgettable. No discernible qualities other than a fine moustache. So I need to work on that. So um, there we are. See what difference that makes. So I start coming on from the right. I have to deploy up to six inches in. And each unit has to have a three inch gap. So there's not a lot of room for manoeuvring. As you can see, I put my general. You saw on the wooden base. Not finished yet. And I get to re-roll whichever unit he's with. So failing an activation with the general. Doesn't end the turn. Get a re-roll. If that doesn't work, then you end the turn. And the way we've played it, you can move the general at the end of the turn only. Okay, so the bidder was... They're not affected by the bad terrain, so they're going to go running eight inches through the wood. And the cavalry at the top. And here come the shooter guys. And there's Roger attempt to come on, so I'll skip through these. And it's a bit of a rush, similar thing. Bit of us into the woods. A bit of a race for the centre to start off with. And for those who haven't played the game, Generally, you fail that. Uh, uh, different units have different difficulties to activate. If you fail that roll, end your turn. So you don't always get to move everything. Okay, there's a bit of open space here. And there you go. Example. <coughs> Tried to activate the Pidawas. I think we're back over to my side. Three. Not enough. Turn ended. Should always do the General's unit first if you're playing this rule. And get that re roll at least. Okay, back over to Roger. Here they come. Pop, pop, pop. So you can see that uh, on the left hand side, Roger's units are starting to get quite a way around this side of the village. He's got a bit of a jump on me there. But I get a good turn. Almost everything's moving up, and I go in straight down the middle of the road. I kind of. My bidders have bravely come out of the wood on the bottom of the screen, you'll notice. And they're going to try and sneak to that middle uh, building, which might be a risk with the enemy coming so close. The plan there, I've set my shooters up right in the middle of the main street, and they're going to try and shoot everything that comes along there. The plan at the top, you can see the cavalry unit. Their job is to dip in and get the middle top building, if you like. And then, rolling up behind them, the foot will pick up the two nearest to me. And hopefully I'll grab four, and then get out quick and try and win the game that way. Bit of a bonus for me. Four straight up for Roger, so they're not going to move at all. Bad turn. Back to me again, and right, as you can see, I'm right back into the town now. Start to move up. I guess get another poor turn from Roger, I can jump in. Oh, there you are, Roger's jumped in the first building, and the token is hidden underneath. I don't know the value of this token. It's bidders have grabbed it, and it's up to them what they will do with it. So there's their face down. I use little magnetised bases, because then, because the, cause the figures are on the sort of modern coins, which is slightly ferrous, they will stick to that and they can carry the treasure around without having to worry about it. Alright, so again, racing around that far side. That wood's really in the way for him there. Okay, gives you an overview of what's happening in the battlefield. We're down at Firestorm again. Tables everywhere. Lots of games going on. And you can see that uh, my bid is a bit in the open but that, at the bottom end of the table. With the cavalry almost into charge range, but my guys have got guns. So do you stand there and shoot? Do you make a dip for that central building and run for it? Or do you just run for it? <laughs> yeah, that sort of choices you have to think about. Right, so anyway, so I've hit two buildings. Three buildings, I think, almost four. So the two middle ones. And I made a bit of a mistake here, because if you remember, my plan was for the cavalry to go for that middle top building grab it and get out. But then, I don't know if it was a mistake or not, but the thinking then was the foot units can each take one of the buildings, which gives me four, which should be enough to win it, and the cavalry be a screening force, just get in the way, be a nuisance, they can be expendable, and then hopefully we're going to uh, have enough tokens escaping. So let's see what I got. These guys picked up a two-pointer. That's okay. Another two-pointer for the middle building. 
that's the one in the foot. That's going to be the hardest one to get back. And a one-pointer down here. It's disappointing. And another one-pointer. So really, couldn't have been any worse. Two ones. I got both the ones, both, and two twos. So if you work it out, that's six points out of eleven. So if I get all four bits of treasure out, I will scrape to them by one. But if any one of these units gets captured or destroyed, I've lost the game. So do you cut and run? Or do you stand and fight? Okay, so the situation, as you can see, Roger's got to the other buildings on the other side. I don't think he actually um, took the treasure, which I think he should have done, because then he would have known, he could have worked out which treasures I had, and how many he needed to capture. But he wanted to keep that unit free, so he could capture some of my treasure. Again, dilemmas. Just look in here, you see one of my paint-covered fingers showing the men-at-arms statistics, as I've done them. You can see a few statistics there, I've got these sheets of download. So to move is the first number, you need 5 plus... Oh, hang on, I've got the wrong order. Sorry, charge is 5 plus. Then move on this instance, and also 5 plus. Then the way I split it up, the next column is their attack value. So that means they need 3 plus on a D6 to hit. Next figure, defense value. So if they're defending, they're going to need 4 plus to hit. And then you've got their armor value and their courage. Just gives you an idea. Now this was a crucial moment. Roger didn't get to do anything this turn. And the situation where I got my Bidoers very close to his cavalry. Go to get run down. Options. Run for it. Which requires 6 plus on two dice. Or give them a round of firing. 7 plus. And I think, well, if I shoot them, I can just kill one. I mean, they're going to hit... Oh, I'll just check their shoot value. is 4 plus. 12 dice. 6 should do six wounds on average. Their armor is three. It could kill two. I kill one more next turn. They don't have half value. But if you run, they've already got the treasure. You can see it under the base. They might get out and try and win the game. So I went for shoot. The more aggressive tome. And of course I rolled a six, which is the worst possible roll. Because not only have I failed the activation ending the turn, I also know that if I'd gone for the move, they would have done. So they are now just sitting there with the cavalry right next to them, hoping they don't get, I was like a five or something to uh, to charge them. But it was a great, in rough terrain, they're great at shooting. In the open, they die very quickly. Very clever rules to do that so simply. Yes, of course, uh, Roger's going to use an opportunity to jump his cavalry, almost touching the Bidoers. So it's going to be difficult to run, even if they try now, because the buildings are in the way. And they're very close. <laughs> and their cavalry move 10, they move 8. And I can't go through the towns and stuff in the way, so options are running out for the Bidoers. And he's moved his tough guys, the Hatemotos, the men at arms, Samurai, down the middle of the road to give me more decisions to make. My Bidoers, they shoot those to try and tip the balance so that my general can charge in with my Hatemotos. Because um, if you charge with the men at arms on foot, the attacker is hitting on 3 plus, defender on 4 plus. They've got an armor ranking of 4, which means you need 4 hits to kill one. So, really, you're trying to get to 8. If you're hitting on 3 plus with 12 dice, there's a good chance you get 8. On 4 plus, it's not really. So, that's a crucial thing to charge. So, I've got to think about my options here. Oops, sorry, I've jumped the gun a bit there. Roger's got the jump on me, and he's charged those in. So, he's hitting on 3s, I'm hitting on 4s. My general's there as well, which is uh, not going to give any bonus to the fighting, but plus one to the morale when we test that. Oop, hang on. Okay, so Roger's rolled out of threes. All three ups counts. So I see there. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's enough for two hits. And I rolled a seven, which is so annoying because it's one short two casualties, so I lost 2-1. So you can see two of mine coming off. Roll to risk a general. He passed, so he's okay. Try for morale. It's quite easy for these guys to pass. They're pretty tough. It's a minus two for the two figures lost. We need to get about three, I think it is, on 2d6. So they move back three inches. 
Just confirming there. My cavalry got a one underneath. Do they run away with that one? Or do they charge in? Don't forget, they're not the full-on heavy cavalry. They're only armour value three, so they will lose a few. Although it's tempting to try and whittle down those Hatimoto of Rogers. And meanwhile, other things Roger's doing. Just bringing the, bring the stuff up. It's a long walk around that wood. So there's the situation. So now I've got three choices. Just hiding behind the building at the top right are my cavalry. They could charge in against the Hatamoto. Try and whittle them down. So maybe shoot them first with the Bidoas. Whittle them down a bit. Then charge in with my Hatamoto. Still get 12 dice, even though they got the two casualties. Maybe that'd be enough to trip them down to half. And the cavalry finish them off. But also the other problem I got is the cavalry at the bottom are going to come in and kill the Bidoas. So I opt for the Bidoas to shoot the cavalry first. <laughs> and roll four. So uh, that ends the turn. So all those options, none of them happen. That's a disaster. So of course the cavalry, happy days. The muskets or flintlocks, whoever they are, have misfired. How are they going to ride them down? Horrible. There they go, flooding in, and the general as well. So they're guaranteed to move. Didn't have to roll for it even because of his great leader bonus. Oh yes, I, I tried to flee. That's right, there is an option to evade. You need to get 7 plus on 2 dice. So 5, of course. They're not escaping. Cavalry is hitting on 3 up. Yeah, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Nine. Divide that by two. That'll be four dead then. So let's see, as you can see in the open, they've only got six figures. You lose four. They, they've had it. And just checking my sheet here. In the melee, defending, hitting on five plus twelve dice. You go try and get four hits. So they didn't do anything. So then there's a broken marker. They're running. Managed to roll quite well, so they're not on zero. Didn't get the zero. They're not completely gone. They're just retreating. There are only two figures left. One thing that saved them, because these guys, I can't remember if they're going to charge them in to finish off the Bidoers, or get the charge on the... Try to finish off my Hatamoto, but all three, which fails. You see the general reappearing, so Roger's moved him across there. So next turn, it's the Hatamoto will be getting the re-roll. <coughs> or in his case, automatic activation. So my guys have to rally. They rolled nine. So take away the four figures they've lost. Gives five. Their courage for Bidoers. Got the sheep in front of me. Is five. So there you go. Made it exactly. So they are now active. The trouble is they can't do anything this turn. I need them in charge range of lots of nasty things that could kill them. Because they really want to run. So I try and put stuff in the way, make some threats, because they have got some loot. Attack, do whatever I can, and try and give them a chance to get out, mostly because of the loot, not because they're much use anymore. And they do move eight, so if they can get going, it's going to be hard to catch. So the cavalry crash in first. <coughs> As you can see, all the six on two dice, enough of them charge in. Uh, if only I had those really nasty, killing ones, but still, let's have a look. The mounted sergeants... See, I'm hitting on fours instead of threes. Oh, my armor value is three instead of four, so they're not as tough as heavy cavalry. But Roger's a bit of an expert on uh, the Japanese, and they're more appropriate for samurai. Amy, that's correct. So there's my bundle of dice. Again, seven hits. See, if they were the proper heavy cavalry, the threes would have counted. That would have been nine hits, would have taken two off. Seven hits only takes one off. Very simple, these rules, but surprising how well the, the combat works, I think. So fighting back. Yeah, they're hitting on fours. Have that lot, he says. Seven hits. Of course, the cavalry only are like armour three and lose two figures. So the cavalry actually lose two figures and lose the melee. And will retreat half a move. Then they pass the morale test. Okay, slightly confusing picture over on the right hand side. You see my Hatamoto with the general in the middle right. Got their shooters into a good spot now between the buildings so they can shoot down. And if at the bottom right, the main unit of uh, Samurai 
which are counting as sergeants, as opposed to the Hatamoto, which are MAA, and then we got the Asikari, which are uh, Asikaru, sorry, which are using as yeomen. So the Bidouas are getting run down by the infantry, but the good news now is if you look on the right, you can see all the shooters are there, the Tipu. They are there in a good spot to blast them, and that will be less than 12 inches is close range, hitting on fours. Not much hope for the Bidouas, unfortunately. Yeah, they just get killed outright. They don't bother to work that one out. Activate to shoot. Eleven. Oh yes, they're very keen to pour in some revenge. Boom, so have that. Six hits, slightly disappointing, but it does kill one more, and now they're down to half strength. Which means they only get six dice in melees instead of twelve. Minus three off the rally, and they're still going to be okay on that front, but the general's with them. So the cavalry have a go. Cavalry come charging in, get an eight. So I'm rolling twelve dice against six dice. I'm hitting on fours. So I think the cavalry just about wiped them out. So they've been wiped out. And the way we're playing it, <laughs> is that means the general's gone as well. I can't remember if they failed their morale or just killed them all, but uh, that was them gone, and the general gone, and some loot sitting in the middle of the table. So that was a huge bonus. Huge bonus. I think Roger's going to write some rules where the general's got a chance of escaping. <laughs> but today he died. Advantage back to me slightly on that front. So you can see the cavalry. Roger's moving his cavalry. They're souping round. It's getting quite interesting now. Uh, actually, they've charged into the centre. They've made some major hit against my cavalry. Because my cavalry get a bit beaten up by that infantry. They're down to half shots. So it's my six dice. Defending mounted sergeants. I'm hitting on fives. He's got twelve dice hitting on fours. So we know which way that battle's going to go. I think that's six hits. Roger, armor three, so it kills two. That must be me. I only get six dice. Hey, what a six dice if that was me. Yes, and there's the 12 dice for Roger. Ha ha ha. Five hits, is it? Yes. See if they were the proper heavy cavalry, that would have been a, all those threes would have counted. So he does one. <laughs> Funny old game sometimes, dice, aren't they? So bizarrely, they see them off, just about. I right, get to the climax. Okay, all those hits. I think my cavalry start to. So left with Rogers, cavalry in the middle of the table. My shooters are going to have another whack at them. Yep, another one killed from shooting. I might have got that last cavalry melee a bit wrong, but it doesn't really matter. Okay, so you see at the bottom here, I've got another full unit starting to come round to try and pick up some of that treasure quick. So if you remember, the difficulty I've got is my treasures are worth 1, 1, 2, 2. So I have to grab 4. Been a bit unlucky here. If I could just add 1, 3, I could just retreat off the table. Game would be easy. Okay, so these guys are going to move. Double 6. Oh, they're mad keen. So finally, Roger picks up the treasure under this one. I wonder if he realised at this point that I had all the low scoring what chips. I should think he did. And I can't see on the picture, but I'm pretty sure they're getting shot again by these muskets, who I have put the general with to make sure every turn I start off shooting with a reroll. Just shoot, 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 shoot. And the middle of this town is becoming a bloodbath. But they successfully rally. Hurrah. Gives you an idea, middle right, you can see the general behind the shooters pouring the shots down the middle. And my unit down the bottom here just coming running around to try and grab some treasure to win the game. And Roger's trying to do the same to me on the other side. It's quite symmetrical and sort of uh, paralleled. 
And I think what I have to work out here is that his Asigaru in the middle of the table are just in long range of the muskets. So they're going to get another volley. Fives and sixes hit. Only the two. Disappointing. So that's enough to take one figure off. Do a morale test. Oh, double one. I'll tell you what, if they'd lost a few more, that would have been the game. Because <coughs> if I could... Um, the Asigaru, which you count as Yeoman. So the Courage is four plus. But anyway, just look at it. If you get... If you roll double one, takeaway one is one. If you get to zero or less, they're res removed. Oh, so I could killed one more, that whole unit would have gone, and the treasure would be left in the middle. And I think that would have been the game. But anyway, as it is, they're, they're battered, which actually helps him, because they move five back, potentially out of range. They do need to be rallied, so there we go. The shooters are doing a fantastic job, especially with the general with them. I really like that rule. Gives you an extra tactical choice. Choices are always good in games, I think. So the cavalry are going to run them down. So if I can hit them while they're broken, they only hit on sixes. And even with six dice, ah, oh, I should have... They're, what, they're, what, they're armed, like two or something? Could have killed three, maybe, or two? Test them again. But no, nothing happens. ha, ha, ha. No wonders of this game. So rolls a six, of course. Actually, they're not. They're the sergeants, aren't they? Ah, see, they're not the Ashikara. They're the better ones. So I, when I put these videos together, I get very small pictures to work from on uh, Photo Story. So you're getting a better view than I am. And it was a couple of weeks ago, the game. Anyway, so they've rallied. They're going to stay there. So I think this is uh, shooting them again. Can really do with a good round of shooting. Another one coming off. Oh, managed to get the cavalry this time. Sorry. Terrible picture there. And their morale's held. I think they've got one figure left. And meanwhile, I'm trying to remember what's happening here. I'm sorry about this. Yes, their, their foot samurai who were coming around the bottom have gone in to try and charge in and finish off. The cavalry, that's right, there was a melee there between those infantry and the cavalry. We both passed the morale test as a dice you can see. Right, here we go, quick overview of what's happening. So bottom left, and I'll go around clockwise. There's my fresh infantry coming up. I think they've just... I think there's one cavalry left just above them. On the left you see that unit which got broken by shooting, which is slowly escaping with treasure. The Bidouas, I think you find Roger's Bidouas have already started scurrying off the table with their ill-gotten loot. Which does leave that unit at the top a bit isolated. And I think that's Roger's shooters, but I'm trying to double gang up on those guys to take them out as well. Right, let's carry up to the... Yes, one cavalry guy. It's so annoying. One guy is left and rallied, and he's running off with the treasure. And the Bidouas are running off with the treasure. <laughs> so you've got the rubbish bidouers and a single cavalry guy and these broken guys running away well I've got to catch one of them otherwise the game's lost so I measure the range it is just inside the long range which means just double check on this tell you the right information sorry um, shoot value is 4 but I think it's 5 because of long range so, boom, again, just one casualty. I really could do with just a really, one good rocking roll. And there are 11. <laughs> now, the question here, if a unit is already battered, you can use, um, you know, disordered, whatever, the battered's the term in this game, and you shoot them, yeah, they pass the rally test, they're fine, yeah. So, I guess you remove... The broken, so they'd be better off and shot them at all because they get to move now. And these guys, yes, they rolled the double one. I managed to get a hit on them, so they're one, two, three, four. I think that's those gone. Is that we killed the general? Oh, sorry about the confusion there. I don't know why we're showing this, but. I think the general's long gone. But anyway, if they hadn't, if they were running off, this is when they rolled the double one. The unit's broke and the general died. It was either now or earlier. It doesn't make any difference. Sorry about that. Okay, at the top of the table. 
<sighs> Trying to run after these guys. They rally again. Okay, just about squeeze them in the 18 inches. I had a choice here because there's a target at the top right. Shoot them. Or try and stop those running away with the treasure. Got to go for the ones with the treasure. And again, just three hits or 12 dice. Fives or sixes, you hope for four, which would have killed two, you know, anyway. Another one dead. Another morale test for them to take. And they failed it. <laughs> which again, nudges them out of range, but the great news is... Three, six... I'm sure it was a fail. They failed that. So they're now retreating at half speed. I'm broken with the treasure. And I've got my unit at the bottom. Full tilt going after them to try and catch that last treasure point. And if I can take that, the game's pretty much mine. Oh yeah, his unit at the top, his shooters, who didn't get to activate much, and were caught in the open. So my top guys, Hik Hakimoto, we should have mentioned they've been gradually moving all the way around the right-hand side of that building to go and finally attack these guys. And they're going to crunch them up, I should imagine. So the shooters, three sixes, thanks a lot. Anyway, I've got armour four. Because the shooters cross them in. See, they're melleying. It's gone down to six here. I thought it was five. So they've done some damage to the Hakimoto. They hit. And as you can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I think crossbows are armor two. So that's four dead. So they're in big trouble. And I've got more help from the shooters if needed. So we're giving that to Hakimoto, it's getting late. And that's not where it's going to be decided. So they're breaking, Hakimoto are going to keep chasing them and hacking them, chasing them and hacking them. Enjoying themselves. Right, this is the crucial one. I need to get the long bomb charge in here to catch that broken unit and mess it up and save the last piece of treasure. And that's Roger's role, because they're a broken unit. A battered unit, they're only hitting on sixes. He's rolled four sixes with twelve dice. That's two of mine died. But it's okay, surely, because uh, one of my guys we're hitting on fives. Fives and sixes are twelve dice because a yeoman attacking. Boom. Look at that lot. Only one hit. So actually lose the melee, 2 1. How can I charge him in the rear with a fresh unit against a broken unit, hitting on sixes? Lose the melee. <laughs> Still, morale test to make, and they've taken quite a few casualties. So hopefully they break. Four. Unfortunately, that's my morale test. So my guys are broken, and we run off. <laughs> Oh, I'm not sure the test for his unit, but they passed, of course. This brought us up to a rules question we we're quite sure at the time, is that if you, uh, if a broken unit wins a melee and passes its test, does it become unbroken or unbattered? And I think we checked it again after, so we got it right. Yes, it does. Either way, they've recovered, so they don't have to rally this turn. If I hadn't fought them at all, and they were battered, if they had then retreated off the table, the treasure wouldn't have counted, and they'd probably won. Because we attacked, lost the melee, and they rallied, they move off the table in good order. So they had one treasure under the... Um, I'm trying to chase up with them. Oh, that's right, trying to get a long-range shot with the muskets. But unfortunately, it's too little too late. And they do activate and move off. Yes, yeah, so that was a dilemma. If you're broken, get attacked, win the melee, pass your test, you're no longer broken. So they moved off. So, ah, oh, the battle was so much won. I mean, you've got that unit just about hanging on. The Bidouers, who never did anything, so they're a full-strength unit. If you remember, the one cavalry guy escaped. So you had those three treasures together, and I got pipped to the post. And it's a defeat, but what an exciting game. It all came down to the last couple of rolls. It really was good. I hope you enjoyed it. There are more Lion Rampants coming up soon. Uh, so if you click on subscribe, you'll get notification when that happens. Also some more blueshirt and a few other things coming up. So, um, yeah, look forward to the next one. Hope you enjoyed it.